intentions of our hearts and minds be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. We've been going now three weeks in the Gospel, of, or the Gospel, in the book of Ruth. Um, week one was Corinna talking about love, right? I actually watched that sermon while it was happening in Pennsylvania, in another congregation, <laughs> just sitting in the lobby, watching it. Um, and the story starts out with Ruth and Naomi, and Naomi and Elimelech going to a different country, and then why did they go to that different country? Because of, if I remember, she didn't really talk about it, but I heard it, famine. They left. They left their home country, Bethlehem, Jerusalem area, because of a famine. The harvest wasn't coming. It wasn't working. And, and those of you that are farmers understand that, right? If there's not enough rain, if there's too much rain, if there's too many bugs, the, the conditions have to be exactly right for things to turn out the right way. So Elimelech took his family to Moab, where there actually wasn't a famine. And his sons married. But then everybody died. And then they come back, right? Naomi comes back and Ruth follows her because Ruth is a woman of integrity. She could have stayed in Moab with her family, but she decided that she would follow after Naomi and do what she needed to do to help take care of her mother-in-law. And then in chapter 2, we had Karis preach on relationships and how it's all about Ruth going to the fields to glean, right? This was actually a Levitical thing that, that farmers had to do. It's in Leviticus 19, that you'll leave the edges of your field for, for those that need it to glean. You don't clear the whole field. You only take the middle portion, but you leave some for everyone else because that's what we're called to do. We're called to give out of the abundance that we've been given to the other people that need it, right? So Ruth was there gleaning, taking some. And Boaz actually did more than that. He told his servants to take some of the, out of their sheaves and to cut it up and leave it for her to pick up. And what else did he say to his servants in chapter 2 that Harris really didn't hit upon? But it's important for this morning's chapter 3 lesson. Does anybody know what he said to his... He called Ruth over and they sat down and they ate lunch and he let Ruth have part of, of the workers' lunch. And after Ruth got back up to go back to gleaning, he took his workers aside and he said to them, Do not harm that woman and watch over her. Which to most of us may not be a big thing. But remember, who is Ruth? She's what? She's a foreigner. She's a Moabite in Israelite land. She's a foreigner, she has no family, so she's fair game. Let your minds go wild with that. I'm not going to explain it. Boaz told his servants not to harm her and make sure that she is protected. Boaz is a man of integrity because he goes a step further than he has to. He's supposed to leave the edges of his field so that people can glean from him. He doesn't have to protect this woman, but he does. So here in chapter 3, we get an interesting, interesting scene. Right? Naomi says to Ruth, I need to make sure that you're taken care of, so you need to go to Boaz, who Ruth, who Naomi assumes is the next closest of kin. So after all of the celebration, right? Because what just finished? The barley harvest just finished. And, and remember Elimelech? And Naomi left because of a drought, and there wasn't any harvest. So now this is huge. The harvest has come in, the bugs didn't get it, there was the right amount of water, and everything is great, and so what do they do? They celebrate. They throw a party, right? That's what it said right there. Did you catch, all, catch that? Do not make yourself known to the men until to man until he has finished eating and drinking. That's their party. They kind of play it down a little bit here in the reading. 
it would have been a huge celebration because in three out of ten years in, in Israelite lands, there's, a, there's a, known to be a drought. So that's at least three years you're not going to have a harvest. And then if there's not bugs, like Joel talks about, bugs coming in and destroying all the harvest. So it's not just a drought. There's other issues that could come along. But this was a good harvest. And now they're celebrating. And, and Naomi tells the Ruth, get cleaned up, put on some good perfume, get dressed up, and go to the threshing floor where the men are. And after they've eaten and drank their fill, he's going to lay down and watch where he lays down. Hmm? At the edge of the barley mountain is where he lays down. And then she goes and uncovers his feet, which we won't get into what feet is. But I will tell you that it's not these things. This is a very racy chapter in the Bible. There's a lot of implications going on right here, right now. Ruth goes in and uncovers his feet, and she lays down next to him. And he wakes up, and he's startled, and what happens? He says, who is this woman lying here? Now remember what Naomi told Ruth to do. Naomi told Ruth to get dressed up, to, to make herself look nice, to look pretty, to put on a nice smelling perfume, to go into the, the threshing floor, and after he's laid down, after he's had his fill of drink, to uncover his feet and to lay down and, and do whatever he tells you to. Right? And what happens here? Boaz says, who is this? And what happens? She says, I am Ruth, your servant. You're all like really quiet. I am, I am Ruth, your servant. And then what does Ruth do? Because Naomi told her to wait to find out what he wanted her to do, to do whatever she, he tells you to do. But what does she do? I am your closest kin. Spread your cloak over me. And what does that mean? What does it mean when a gentleman of status spreads his cloak over a woman? The marriage proposal. She just proposed marriage to Boaz. She's a woman. She's not allowed to do that. She was told to do whatever he told her to do. But she takes the initiative to say, I'm the one you've been watching out for in the fields. Spread your, and you're my next closest of kin, so according to the law, you're supposed to marry me, so marry me. And what does Boaz do? This is why you can say that Boaz is a man of integrity. Boaz says to her, you are blessed, and this show of your blessedness is even better than the first one you did. And what does that mean? When she followed Naomi back from Moab to help take care of her. This is even more, because you didn't go after young man, whether rich or poor, you came to your, to your closest relative, you came to me. But wait, I'm not actually your closest relative, so in, in the morning, I will go to the gate and I will talk to your closest relative, and if he wants to take care of what he's supposed to do according to the law, then so be it, and he will be your husband. But if not, I will fulfill what you have just asked for. You see, while there's a lot of stuff happening here, nothing really happens here. Because both Ruth and Boaz are people of integrity. Ruth is there to help take care of Naomi. And Boaz sees that and is wants to take care of Ruth. You see, sometimes things aren't always as they appear. Sometimes God sends us into situations where we have to do things that we may not necessarily want to do. But yet we have to know that he's always with us. Kind of like, I don't remember where I sat, Moses. Kind of like Moses. 
Moses didn't want to go talk to Pharaoh. Why? Because he was Pharaoh's brother and he had killed an Egyptian and he didn't want to go back to have to deal with that. And he couldn't talk very well. But God said, I'm going to be with you, so you need to go. Look at all of the other heroes of the Bible and, and look at all of the things that they have, shortcomings that they have. You know, we hold all of these people up as pillars of our faith. But Moses didn't want to go. David was an adulterer. Paul had some sin or something in his life that he couldn't get rid of. All of these people that we hold up as pillars of our faith have issues and they struggle with life. And what does that mean to us? It's great news for every last one of us because it means that they were normal just like we are. And they're not always perfect because we're not always perfect and we do things wrong. But what did we get in that? That God is always with us. And if we can only listen and follow where he's leading us and do those hard things, his love and his light are going to shine through. So when you come to something that you think you can't do, remember the people of integrity of Boaz and Ruth. And remember the love that Ruth had for Naomi, following her from her home country to a place where she was a stranger and a foreigner and someone who was looked down upon simply because of the her status, her understanding of her being a woman, and the fact that she's not an Israelite. To the love that Boaz showed to her because of her relationship with his kinsman, his person. And the love that is shown between Ruth and Boaz. And be prepared for next week, because we'll finish this story, where Boaz goes to the gate. And something miraculous happens next week that shows how simply important Ruth is to our understanding of who we are as followers of God. She's not just some arbitrary figure in the Bible. She is a woman of great importance to each and every one of us. So remember that God is always with you. That God will empower you to do the things that you don't think you can do. And that He will always be there if you'll only open your heart to allow him to work through your life.